Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the final texturing tutorial for Jinx's Grenade. In the last video tutorial, we brought in the OBJ model of Jinx's Grenade into Substance Painter and started texturing it. In this video, we're going to cover how to create emissive maps, export all the textures, bring it into Maya for a final render. It's a jam-packed tutorial, so let's go ahead and get started. If you are new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. Tutorials include software such as Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. If that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up your software, and let's get started in completing Jinx's Grenade. All right, so let's add the emissive for the eye. So we're going to create a new painted layer. And down here at the bottom, we have, whoop, first of all, we want to make sure our alpha is not that. So let's go ahead and grab a brush. We want color. We don't want height, but we do want emissive. So emissive is going to make it look like it's glowing. Let's grab kind of like that. It's actually green. So let's go for that interesting bright green. And we probably want the same thing for the color. You can paint it in. But as you can see, it affects the whole thing, right? So let's do it a different way. Let's delete this one and just create a fill. We're going to get rid of everything except for color and emissiveness. We're going to do the same thing. Grab that interesting green. Whoa, that looks crazy, but that's okay. I think that's what we want. And let's grab the green again for this one. Let's add a black mask and let's grab this and we're going to click on these guys. So that kind of controls it a little bit more. All right. And now we're going to add the uh, crazy paint things that that makes Jinx's grenades look like Jinx's grenades, which is these dripping paint things that she has. All right. So this is what we have so far. Let me look at this one. Right, so she has these interesting little drips and they're also emissive. So we're going to do something very similar. All right. So these are the eyes and let's add another fill again. Let's get rid of all of this because it's just going to be for color and we are going to go for pink and we're also going to pink on this one. Crazy. Let's add a black mask and over here to the right, we can do drip. So we have alphas that have drip, we have grunge, we have a couple of things, but in here we have a couple of drip looking things, or you can also try to type in paint and see what comes out. So we have paint things here. We have some sprays. If we look over here, we have a couple of cool things. So let's go back to drip. And what we can do is just grab this brush make sure you're in the fill and then you can just kind of add in some of the color you can also use the uvs to paint so feel free to use the uvs here to kind of add in that color let's grab this one and i can just kind of add it in there we go that's better once you get rid of that um, alpha down here at the bottom the stencil, we didn't need that. So we now have, let's see, if you want to, we can add some fingerprints in the back, right? So we can just kind of add a fingerprint like this, but let's add a different type of emissive. So let's create a layer again. I'm just going to turn all of these off and, or what we could do is right click on this and we can duplicate the layer. So let me delete this. And then with this one, instead of repeating ourselves over and over, we can just go ahead and grab the emissive color and let's clear the mask because it since I duplicated it it grabbed the color from the previous layer all the masking so I cleared it and then I'm just gonna do it again pink let's get closer uh, substance painting <laughs> substance painter is pretty amazing I am not convinced by these this so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna right click clear mask and see if I can find something a little bit better so here I have this brush again. I make sure that you're in the black layer and let's see if I can make it look 
What's it doing? Uh, let's see what we have. Let's make sure it's all the way to white. And see if we can get a nice little drip. Let's make it smaller. Maybe we can get more details this way. Okay, I'm removing the angle jitter because I actually do want it to be a little bit more straight because it was just doing all sorts of stuff. So with that, I can kind of go in and paint a little bit more here. Anything that I don't want, I can paint out. Here's drips high. We could try that as well, I think. It's a little bit more dramatic. Let's see. We have we have splats, so we have actually stains. So if you want to, you can just kind of try some of these, like a spray. Just kind of place these things everywhere so it looks really interesting to look at and it's kind of fun. All right, so there's places I need to clean up, like over here. So I can always go back in, grab a brush, find a, it's kind of like a soft brush, like this one. You can always make sure that it's black. And let's see if I can find something a little sketchier. And then using black, I can kind of just paint that away. Same thing for this one. Let me go ahead and get rid of this one. Oh, wrong layer. Grab the right layer and you can kind of paint that away. Aha, I found this dripping. I knew there was a dripping one in here somewhere. It's called the drop. So instead of a drip, it's a drop. So that's funny. Let me make it bigger. Make it really dramatic. There we go. And let's see, I have another one here. Pink. Yeah, it looks way better. Nice. Maybe throw another one, another splat here. Or you could just put another drop here. Actually, I'm going to rotate it. Let me rotate it. There we go, just a little bit. Okay, going back to this, uh, let's see. So there's a bunch of stuff. Um, here we go. So over here we have fonts and we can choose a font, something maybe that looks written. Um, you click on this and let me go back here to make sure it's, it's straight. And we can type in, oops, under text parameters, just go ahead and type in Jinx if it would let me. There you go. And I can make it larger, I think. I wish it was something a little bit more dramatic, but we could just stick with this. So it's pretty big and then we can rotate it slightly. So, and then just type in pink chicks. And there you go. I think that's pretty good. Very fast, very quick. I might make the metal a little bit darker. So let me, I keep changing my mind. Uh, let me grab this one, open it up, and my metal, I try to make it a little bit purple, but let me change it to a little bit darker. I just really want to make sure that it's really dramatic, the difference. And again, I want the scratches to be more dramatic too, so I'm going to try to increase the contrast and the balance. And of course, it's going to take a little bit more finessing here, but I just really want it to make sure that the metal looks like metal. And let's decrease the roughness here. Metallics all the way to one. Okay, same thing. Let's take a look at the metal itself and see if, well, let's, we can increase the metallicness of it. And I think that's gonna make it look better. There we go. Okay. Um, all right, so that's kind of like a really quick way of texturing Jinx's grenade. Next, I'm going to export the textures and bring it into Maya and then do a, like a little bit of an animation pass. So let's export all of this. We're gonna go to File, Export Textures. I'm gonna be using Arnold AI Standard Surface. I can go into Settings and tell it where to export, which is going to be in my 3D Projects Arcane sub, uh, Source Images, and then I'm just gonna leave it here. 
Uh, PNGs are fine. PBR McTellanus is great. Let's take a look at this. Emissive height. Probably won't use height. Uh, normal metallic roughness and base color. Everything else looks great. Just go ahead and click on export. And that's super fast. It's amazing. Okay, let's jump into here. We'll assign a new material. There's a faster way. I'll put a link on the video below where you can use a Substance Painter plugin that comes with Maya so you can assign it really quickly and it's great. Actually, I'll just use that. If you don't know where it is, you can always go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, Plugin Manager, and then just look for Substance or just Sub and just turn all of these on and that will give you this link. So what we wanna do is attach textures. So click on this one. I'm going to use Arnold. You can also use standard surface. And what we're going to do is select multiple maps. And what's cool about this is that it will automatically connect all of these. So I'm going to select my base color, emissive, metallic, all that jazz. It will automatically connect them all and then apply. Now, one of the things that you need to do is make sure that the bump map has flip R. And you just want to kind of confirm that Alpha Luminous is on. But let's see what it looks like right now. So we have this objects. Right click, assign existing material. We have a new AI standard surface. Press the number six on your keyboard. And now we have this really interesting looking metallic object. Doesn't look like much, but let's see what it looks like. And I, it's the preview is kind of weird, but let's see what it looks like. Let me put in a stand here. Arnold Light, Physical Sky. Uh, usually I take the physical sky and crank it up the intensity by 1.5 automatically and let's render. So everything's looking really good. The base, I'm not too convinced. Let me rotate this camera just a little or the light source a little bit more. So the metal, the dark metal turned out really dark, but the emissive is working. The highlights are working. All this stuff is working. Let me see if I can fix the color using Maya. We'll see. I'm going to take a screenshot. I might have to go back and export it again. But let's take a look at the AI center surface. This is the Jinx shader. All right, so what we did, what I did to make it look like this was go to color, click on this, make sure you click on input, uh, go down here and make sure that utility is raw. I changed the exposure to a positive 0.5, so it's a little bit brighter. So before we had this, and now we have this. So it definitely looks a lot better. Uh, I got rid of the dome background by clicking on the dome and scrolling down and changing the camera to zero. So that gives it that black background. So you notice that it's a little bit brighter and definitely the colors look a lot better. So I'm very happy with these results. In the next video tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to animate this character. And then I will show you how to render it, create a turntable and finish it up as if it was a portfolio piece. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I learned a thing or two. If you did learn a thing or two, please consider subscribing and also liking my videos and sharing. That would be amazing if you shared my videos with your friends, your coworkers, your instructors, you know, anybody that might be interested in this type of stuff. Take a look at academicphoenixplus.com for free models, free tutorials, and so much more. And in my website, we also have e-courses. I provide e-courses for you where you can learn more about modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and so much more. So take a look at Academic Phoenix Plus and also e-courses. I'm also in social media. So if you guys are modeling this, UV mapping it, texturing and following along, I would love to see the work that you guys have created. So if you guys tag me, I'm in Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all sorts of places. So take a look and uh, please tag me. I would love to see your work. All right, guys, thanks for watching and I will see you next time.